Hello, I am Mrs. Arnold, and in this video, we will talk about glacier erosion in deposition. Main idea here is that glaciers modify landscapes by eroding and depositing rocks. These are the questions you should be able to answer at the end. How do glaciers form? What are the similarities and differences between valley glaciers and continental glaciers? How do glaciers modify landscapes? And what features are characteristic of glacial erosion and deposition? Remember that erosion is the removal of weathered rock and soil from the original location. It is not the breaking down of these things that is called weathering. Deposition is when the eroded materials are dropped in another location. A glacier is a moving mass of ice and they can be formed in near the poles and also high elevations in mountains. So there are places in the world that you think of as being warm, but um, their mountain regions might have a glacier just because of the elevation. Glaciers also cover 10% of Earth's surface. The first type of glacier we're going to talk about today is the valley glaciers. They form in valleys, obviously, in high mountainous areas. And as they move down slope, they carve V-shaped valleys, which are our stream valleys, into U-shaped valleys. So U-shaped valleys, this is a erosional feature that is characteristics of glaciers, just like the V-shaped valley is an erosional feature that is characteristic of a um, of rivers or streams. So you can see this valley here, it has a U-shape. If this were a valley carved by a stream, it will have a V shape. Um, yeah. Our other type of glacier is the continental glacier. This is a glacier that covers broad continent size areas. So these are going to form in cold climates where the snow can accumulate over many years. They are famous because they flatten landscapes. And in the past, they covered huge areas of the Earth's surface. Which is why, part of the reason why um, Illinois is so flat. Until you get to the southern part of Illinois, if you've ever been down to um, near Carbondale, you can see very glorious looking cliffs there. And that's because um, during the last ice age, the glacier um, did not reach 
down into southern part of Illinois. So they still have um, a very beautiful looking landscape down here and not the flatness that we see in our part. Okay, so these glaciers used to cover huge areas of the earth, but now we have only Greenland and Antarctica. Okay, so here's a picture that shows how the distribution of glaciers have changed over time. So these blue outlines right here, let me color them in. These are where glaciers were present 18,000 years ago. It's like there too, here, and also here. So throughout geologic time, this distribution of glaciers have has obviously changed. So how do glaciers move? Well, there is a zone of accumulation where more snow falls than snow melts. Okay, so in the zone of accumulation, more snow falls than it melts, evaporates, or sublimates. Both valley and continental glaciers move outward when snow gathers at the zone of accumulation. Glacial erosion is going to be the most powerful of all the erosional agents we have talked about because of these three things. Glaciers have a great size, they have great weight, and they have a, they're very dense, their density is going to be another reason. Okay, so these are some characteristics of valley glacier erosion. We are first going to talk about the cirque. So a cirque, which is this first picture here, this is a deep bowl shaped depression. Um, one thing that you can see in this picture here is what I just drew on. That is called a ret. I'm probably saying that wrong. This is going to form when you have two cirques on opposite sides of a valley meet. So we have, we can see our depression here and our depression here and that forms a ridge. And then we have a glacial horn. This forms when there are glaciers on three or more sides of a mountain. And that's of a mountain top. And you can tell that it's a horn because it will have, it will be steep and it is pyramid shaped. Okay, next we have a hanging valley. This forms when a higher tributary the glacier converges with a lower primary glacier then retreats.
So one characteristic of glacial deposition is known as a moraine. So um, we have something called glacial teal. So that is unsorted rock, gravel, sand, and clay that glaciers carry embedded in their ice and on their top sides and front and edges. That makes sense because they're moving over landscape. And as they move over landscape, they're picking up a lot of um, rocks and stuff. So glacial teal is going to be formed from the grinding action of the glacier on the underlying rock. And that can lead to moraines that is basically going to be unsorted ridges of this glacial till that is deposited when the glacier melts. A key thing here to make it different from what we're going to talk about next is that this is unsorted. So we have different size particles here, our rock, gravel, sand, and clay. And um, all of these different size particles are all going to be mixed together in a moraine. It is unsorted. The next thing that we have is outwash, which is when it is sorted. So an outwash plain is an area leading at the leading edge of a glacier where the melt water flows and deposits its outwash. So this is sediment deposited by glacial um, melt water. And it is always sorted by particle size. Whoops. As opposed to moraine. So the moraine is not sorted at all the outwash is going to be sorted by particle size. So even more glacial deposition, we have drumlins, which are elongated landform that forms when continental glaciers move over old moraines. We have eskers, which are long winding ridges of layer sediment form from streams flowing under melting glaciers. So you can see a picture of an esker here, this winding um, ridge right here is an esker. And we have cames, which are cone shaped mounds of sand and gravel. This is a mound of layer sediment that forms when till gets washed into openings in the melting ice. We also have glacial lakes. So we have kettles or kettle lakes that form when water from runoff or precipitation fills a hole that formed from when a large block of ice broke off from a continental glacier and melted. Okay. And we can also see this with valley glaciers. Um, cirques, which are the depression, can fill with water and become cirque lakes.
And another thing that can happen and is when you have a terminal moraine. So remember, our moraine is that glacial deposition. A terminal moraine can block a valley. And then the valley fills with water to form a moraine dammed lake. And we have an example of this with the Great Lakes. So that is a valley that was dammed up by a moraine. Okay, so today we talked about glaciers and the two different types of glaciers, which are continental glaciers and valley glaciers, and the different erosional and depositional features that we can see from each. Have a wonderful day.